Hatshepsut was the first female ruler of ancient Egypt to reign as a male with the full authority of Pharaoh. Her name means foremost of noble women or she is first among noble women. She began her reign as regent to her stepson Thothmose III, who would succeed her and initially ruled as a woman as depicted in Sanctuary. In around the seventh year of her reign, however, she chose to be depicted as a male pharaoh in statuary and reliefs, but still referring to herself as female in her inscriptions. She was the fifth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty during the New Kingdom period, and regarded as one of the best since she was only the third woman to become pharaoh in 3,000 years of ancient Egyptian history, and the first to attain the full power of the position. Cleopatra, who was also exercised such power, would rule some 14 centuries later. The Temple of Hatshepsut is not only a memorial temple that honors Queen Hatshepsut, it is also one of the greatest Egyptian architectural achievements. Designed by Senen Mut, Hatshepsut's steward and architect, this mortuary temple closely resembles the classical Greek architecture of 1,000 years later. Located on the west bank of the Nile, Opposite the city of Luxor, ancient Thebes, Hatshepsut's temple is part of the Theban necropolis. Built in a half circle of cliffs, this memorial temple marks the entrance to the Valley of Kings. Jisr Jisru is the name of the main building of the temple of Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut constructed many monuments and buildings. She also had many statues of herself erected at the sites of these monuments and buildings to impress upon the ancient Egyptian people her standing as a great leader and pharaoh. Hatshepsut's temple at Deir el-Bari is her greatest achievement. It took 15 years to complete. The site was chosen because of its prime location. The ancient Egyptians considered this valley to be sacred for its connection to the funerary goddess Hathor. The first level. The temple of Hatshepsut has three levels. Leading up to the temple is a hundred foot causeway that in ancient Egyptian times was probably lined with sphinx. During that time, the first level boasted exotic trees and shrubbery like frankincense from Hatshepsut's trading expeditions to the land of Pont. Pont is likely Ethiopia or northern Somalia today. A colonnade exists with square pillars that were home to many intricate and exquisite reliefs. Many of these reliefs depicted Hatshepsut on her many trips to Pont. Unfortunately, after her death, these were all destroyed. All that remains are reliefs depicting Thothmose the third and census of the ancient Egyptians quarrying and then transporting two large obelisks down to the river Nile. The second level. One of the significant aspects of the second level is that it contains one of the first ever recorded pictorial documentations of a trade expedition. Specifically, the relief retells Hatshepsut's high official Pa Nasi's journey to Punt, which lasted from 1482 BC to 1479 BC. There is a shrine for the goddess Hathor. She is depicted as, with a woman's face and with a cow's ears and is holding a musical instrument. Hatshepsut's birth is depicted on this level as well. It is sometimes called the birth colonnade. To validate her rule over Egypt, even during Thutmose III's ascension to, into adulthood, she claimed to be the divine daughter of Amun-Ra. In these reliefs, Amun-Ra impregnates Queen Amos and discloses that Hatshepsut will rule over Egypt. The keeper of Theban necropolis, Anubis, the god of mummification and afterlife, has a special chapel dedicated to him on the northern end of the colonnade. The third level. Statues of Horus, in falcon form, flank the ramp that leads from the second courtyard to the third level. The third level houses a portico with several rows of columns that face the front. Behind this is a courtyard that several chambers running off of it. Enormous statues of Hatshepsut made up the outlying columns, with octagonal shaped columns along the inside. After Hatshepsut's death, towards the end of the reign of Thutmose III and the beginning of his successor's reign, there was an effort to obliterate the memory of this female pharaoh. 
Numerous statues from Hatshepsut's mortuary temple were torn down, smashed, and disfigured before being buried in a pit. Her cartouches and images were also chiseled off the reliefs on the wall, including those on the birth colonnade, located on the third floor, depicting Hatshepsut's divine life. It may be added that Akhenaton, who lived about a century after Hatshepsut, also jumped on the iconoclastic bandwagon. Though his target was not the queen's images, but those of the god Amun. Thus, on the birth colonnade at Hatshepsut's mortuary temple, the images of Hatshepsut and Amun are curiously chiseled off. The attempt to completely remove Hatshepsut from history could be said to be a failure, however, as she is today remembered as one of the most successful pharaohs of ancient Egypt.